What's good YouTube, it's Gabriel, just another fan of TV, back at you another video. And PFF just released their list of the best secondaries in the NFL. And I want to talk about where they got the Ravens ranked, man. So look, if you like the content of this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're rocking with my channel, give it a subscribe. All right, so we're going to get into it, man. We know the Ravens had a very good offseason when it came to adding pieces to the secondary, getting guys back in the secondary. So where um, do we rank amongst the you know the eyes of analysts and quote-unquote other experts, right? Uh, so PFF dropped their list. They did it in like a couple of different tiers, you know, flaws, question marks. And then there was, there's tier one. Tier one is, let me get the exact name for what they call it, tier one. Where do offenses even attack? All right. Now, I will say this. They got the Ravens in tier one. But where exactly? Let's, let's find out. Okay. So there's eight teams in this tier. So um, team number eight. The Los Angeles Chargers. Now, the Chargers have a really good secondary. Derwin James, Stacey Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr. And they're looking to be a good team overall. So, that's an elite team. Okay? New Orleans Saints in there. Marshawn Lattimore. This is a good team. We got to see what James Winston does. We got to see how they look their first time without Sean Payton. We got to see what they do. Okay? Number six, Buffalo Bills. We know what they got in Josh Allen. But we also know that that defense is no joke. Tredavious White, they just added uh, Kyir Elam, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyo on the back end. Good secondary. Number five, they gave us fits last year, we got to be honest, Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins are a question mark. We don't know how good the Dolphins are really going to be this year. Um, it all comes on how good would Tua be advancing into, what? what is this, year three now for Tua? So, it all depends on that. Okay. Another elite team, uh, Green Bay Packers. Now, I know the Packers lost Devontae Adams, but as long as they got uh, Aaron Rodgers, their names is going to be in the elite tier. Now, defense, Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, Rasul Douglas, uh, Donnell Savage went to Maryland, University of Maryland, and Adrian Amos from Baltimore. So, shout out to Packers. Um, Cleveland Browns, very good secondary, elite secondary, but... What's happening with Deshaun Watson? Is he going to be suspended? Is he not going to be? Because if they roll out this year with Baker or Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, uh, no matter how good the secondary is, I'm not too concerned about the team. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. Number two, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? Uh, Carlton Davis, Jamil Dean, Antoine Winfield Jr., Mike Edwards, Sean, Sean Murphy Bunting. These are guys that have been together for, for a while now. So they got that uh, cohesiveness, right? And they're overall a good team. We know what they do with Tom Brady on offense, but their defense cannot be slept on. They got guys at every single level of that defense. But you know the team I haven't mentioned is the Baltimore Ravens. I said they were in that elite tier. They're number one. So PFF has the Ravens as the number one secondary headed into 2022. And now, this isn't surprising to me just because, well, we should be surprising to us fans overall. We saw what the Ravens have done in adding talent to the secondary. We've seen it, right? So let's go over what they even said. So now they say that there's question marks from the health standpoint, which is true, okay? Marcus Peters has to come back and still be a guy, okay? Kyle Fuller, although not hurt, we have to see what he has left in the tank, right? Because Kyle Fuller did struggle uh, last year at points for the Broncos, but we know that for the Bears, he was an elite player. So can he get back to that kind of level? And Marlon Humphrey coming back from injury, okay? Can he get back to the elite level? Uh, so they, they got, um, uh, obviously, they have Marcus Williams as one safety, and they have Chuck Clark as the other starting safety. So um, basically what they were saying for the Ravens is that the talent is undeniable in the secondary. Four out of the five guys that are starters in the Ravens secondary have had a top 10 PFF season in um in, in the past four years, right? At least one top ten PFC, PFF season in these last four years. So we're talking about, uh, like I said, Marcus Williams, Marlon Humphrey, uh, Marcus Peters, and Kyle Fuller. They've been top ten in their rankings at least once in the last four years. Okay, and then they also factored in Kyle Hamilton because all the reports from training camp, not training camp, sorry, mini camp, is that Kyle Hamilton's all over the field, making plays. Um, whether it's batting the ball down, guarding tight ends, making interceptions. Kyle Hamilton is making his presence known, making his presence felt all over the field. So that's a good thing for the Ravens. And obviously that only enhances a secondary that already is loaded with talent. 
And now they didn't even mention the younger guys, uh, other younger guys like uh, Brandon Stevens, who I expect a lot from, uh, Pepe Williams, who um, I expect a lot from, Jalen Armour Davis, other safeties we got, Geno Stone. These are names that the media is not going to really mention just yet because, you know, there are bigger names in front of them. But as Mavis fans, these are names that we should know and we should be expecting to make plays this upcoming season. Okay. And um, how we got here is is crazy because the Ravens last year had undoubtedly one of the worst secondaries in the NFL, if not the worst, just due to all the injuries and things like that. I mean, Robert Jackson was playing out there and things like that. He had to guard Devontae Adams. It just wasn't pretty. Okay. Now, for the Ravens to go from undoubtedly one of the worst secondaries to one of the best in one season would be quite an achievement. Now, obviously, some of that is a, um, it comes with an asterisk a little bit because it's really guys coming back from injury. So, you know, if, if Marlon was healthy the whole year, if MP was healthy the whole year, then it's a little different. But with those guys coming back, the addition of Kyle Fuller, uh, the addition of Marcus Williams, the, you know, Chuck Clark playing a role, Kyle Hamilton playing a role. Uh, it's, it's easy to see why the Ravens are ranked so highly on this list. Uh, they should have a um, they should have a top three secondary in the league. You know, when it all pans out between rankings and passing offs per game, interceptions, things like that, the Ravens should grade out highly by the time the season ends. So uh, it was cool to see PFF had them ranked that high because. PFF does something interesting. They had a kind of debate of pass rush versus pass coverage. Now, while they said pass rush is undoubtedly very important, now you can't underestimate a good pass rush. They said that teams are more successful, say if you have a if you have great coverage and a poor pass rush, you can survive and possibly win more games than if you have a great pass rush and poor coverage on the back end. Which is interesting because you would think that the pass rush will be way more effective because, you know, you're putting pressure on the QB. But if nobody's there to throw the ball to, then the sacks come. So, you know, but it's things that go hand in hand. So the Ravens um, are in a good are in a good way with their secondary. Uh, PFF says that, you know, having this kind of, if you want to be an elite defense, uh, having a top three kind of secondary is a way to get into their, um, that kind of elite defense category. And the Ravens have that with the guys that they have on this roster, right? And I'm looking forward to um, these guys not being put in such positions where it's just going to be one-on-one on time, right? Now, Mike McDonald came from the Ravens street, so he's not going to be above blitzing and sending guys. Uh, but I think it will be more balanced and less predictable. That was the biggest thing for me and I think for other Ravens fans is that we were too predictable. Okay, it came to third and four, third and five. Everybody's at the line of scrimmage. Everybody's coming. We know that it's um, not even single high. It's cover zero bliss. Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming down, right? And what Mike McDonald can do is bring that unpredictability to the game and in that way make the Ravens harder to um, hard to score on. Because that's the goal. You don't want the offense knowing what you're going to do next, all right? And as a defense, if the Ravens become more predictable, more multiple in personnel, that is a way to get to that final goal. So um, the experts, just like us Ravens fans, have high hopes for this secondary and believe that this secondary can be uh, an elite core of, of, uh, of players. And I, we got to agree with that. So honestly, I'm expecting no less then uh, pretty much a top five performance across all passing uh, metrics if if health is um, close to 100%. So we're talking about passing yards per game, uh, interceptions, you know what I mean? Things like that where, you know, the secondary directly affects that. I expect the Ravens to be high ranking in these kind of categories. Uh, pass breakups, you know, things like that. So uh, PFF is not a... Um, I mean, obviously, it's not a uh, system that's all-knowing, all-correct. They give a lot of credit to guys that aren't good. They kind of downplay some guys that are good. So, you know, but it's nice to see a, a it's nice to use as a measuring stick uh, for certain uh, certain points. So, um, I thought it was interesting to read the article. I'm gonna put a link to the article in the description if you guys want to check it out. 
And also, if you guys wanted to read the article about the pass rush versus the pass coverage, that's also pretty interesting as well. I'll put that in the link below. So, the Ravens are going to have, according to PFF, the best secondary in the NFL this season. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. I think it's going to be at least top three, top five. Um, number one, I'm not against that. Obviously, I think that can, that's very well a possibility. Uh, so, all right, anyway, it's your boy Gabriel. There's other fan TV. I'm out.